puffy brat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no puffy brat. Whoa. I'm the type of bitch really making some money. Want, you're cropping the top of your head. Do you want to top, crop the top like that? Yeah, yeah. I oh, love you it. do? Okay. Yeah. I love it. I love it. It's a very artistic composition. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, oh. Is a wig. this is a wig. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, guys, and welcome to Language of the Soul podcast, where life is story. Our regular listeners know we are passionate, and that's an understatement about story and its power to transform the individual and then by extension to affect the paradigms of the mainstream of the collective and that sounds pretty heady but there are so many ways in which story really just is life right <laughs> from the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves to national identities that get perpetuated to propaganda advertising and then the more familiar uh, modes of storytelling like literature and cinema stories just around us all day every day and we're promoting an awareness of those stories that we internalize consciously or not i like to say like crab is in the boiling water we're just internalizing stories through socialization all day every day and they shape again everything from policy to just uh you know unexamined paradigms so the way that's going to come into play today, we had a really great episode this morning with a fellow filmmaker. He happened to have been a gay man like myself, and we both navigated the uh, queer film festival circuit. So, right, Virginia, we mostly spoke about representation mm -hmm. and, yeah, that long road of <laughs> representation and what the future holds. But more importantly, and I am going to introduce Virginia in just a moment. But more importantly, we found ourselves, and this happens every week when we have two episodes back to back, fascinating themes occur that actually tie the two episodes together. So there is an entire section in the book, Language of the Soul, from which this podcast was inspired, or by which, I guess, um, about the me mechanics by which story spreads. And I use this metaphor, like, you know, starting at the water cooler at work or even when your head hits the pillow at night and you share your day with your spouse to more recognizable forms like dogma at church or even best practices at work through education, right? We take in these stories. More to the point, there is a section of that chapter devoted to, I call it like, um, bees spreading pollen is a really positive image. But if you skew to the negative and you think of it as like locusts spreading disease, therein lies the power of story. So again, this section of the chapter goes into the idea of creating a climate, right, that could permit homophobia, could permit the disproportionate amount of violence directed at the trans community, for example. In the 90s, some of us will remember Matthew Shepard was in the news. And he was the boy that was crucified, literally, because according to Laura Schlesinger, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Those of us with an eye on representation know that a hostile climate was created over decades that permitted such unspeakable violence. But, you know, seemingly right-wing conservative folks would say, oh, that's not it. We don't need hate crime legislation. Why should they have special treatment? Right. And my answer, even in in my 20s at the time, was, well, we need they need special protection because there's special hatred. <laughs> right. So the right wing faction tends not to connect the dots. How does a gay joke here and there create this climate that permits violence? Right. How does telling children that they're going to burn in hell, right, if they identify as gay all day, every day, how does that not create a climate? So, exactly. yeah, so I have a whole section about it. let's really take a look at this idea that a climate is created, you know, if we can still tell a pull out joke or still tell a fag joke or tell a fat joke for that matter, we may be contributing to something right without even realizing it. So I just found it fascinating that that came up this morning. And I know today's guest has had 
personal experience with right the violence that's directed at the trans community so oh, yeah. i def yeah i want to hear that story for sure <clears throat> but first let me introduce our producer extraordinaire who this week i'm calling <laughs> a patron saint <laughs> patron saint virginia grenier welcome thank you i'm glad to be here and i'm excited for tonight's show so Woo! <laughs> all right well thank you for being here and i will now read our guest's bio and Buffy, as you know, you can correct me on anything that I butcher. Buffy Bratt is a transgender rapper singer who writes, records, and produces all her own music. From Los Angeles, California, Buffy was Miss August from the Angels of Change 2014 calendar. She's released four EPs, the first being My Mind to Yours in 2018, followed by the self-titled Buffy Bratt. Her third EP was The Addicted Type followed by Hollywood Bratz and Rotten Candy in 2022. Her brand new sixth EP is titled A Different Type of Gangster. And I believe, yeah, that's the one you're dropping now. Is that right, Buffy? No, I'm dropping Bratz versus Barbie. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I missed you. <laughs> okay. A Different Type of Gangster. It says <clears throat> will be available February 2026. Yeah, that, that's, that's already, I, I already dropped that. I, I dropped that a few months ago. Okay. Uh, before you did our podcast or after? Uh, after. Okay, well, that's new music, and we can share that with our listeners as well. All, we just need the links. All EPs are available on YouTube, YouTube Music, Instagram, Facebook, Audio Mac, SoundCloud, mm -hmm. RapChat, and by 2024, they should all be on every streaming platform, including iTunes. So instead of reading, there's a little personal bio that we read last time, but it seems like you've had some experiences that you want to share since your last appearance on this podcast. I'm going to largely leave this one to Virginia. And the reason is, you know, this morning, again, with a, a fellow gay filmmaker, we kind of, I dominated the show because we picked each other's brains about things like representation and the future of representation. So with your background in mental health, Virginia, and I do know you have a trans child, I'm going to let you sort of take the lead here. Buffy Bratz, welcome. You got it right. Well, well thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for being here. We're, yeah. glad, to we're glad to have you here. So um, since Dominic just shared that whole last part, um, I guess I'll start here. So I know you have been, you know, you faced a lot of adversity and you've been really resilient through a lot of it, um, dealing with people who have transphobia and all of that. I, I would just love for you to talk to us about how, um, cause for us, it's been inspiring watching your career blossom and grow. And it's a testament to your strength and commitment. So how do you stay strong and motivated and what role does that music, um, does music play in your personal and your public battle? I would say music is probably the, it's pretty much all I have left to hold on to. Uh, there, I don't know if I said this the last time, but I, I, I used to be like, um, I'm, I'm a, I'm a very addicted type of person. Mm -hmm. And if, if I'm not doing something good, I'll, I'll be doing something bad. So music I, became. I think that's a lot of us. <laughs> well, it's true. I said in my book, if you're not creating, you're probably destroying. Yeah. And uh, if it's not outward destruction, it's self-destruction. So I, I'm not minimizing it. I'm not minimizing it, but we all, that is a universal truth. That's good. Yeah, I'm right, Virginia? Like in yeah. terms of inventing, we talk about self-creating every week mm -hmm. on this show. Oh, Tell yeah. your own story. Write your own story. If you're not creating your life, you're falling victim to the elements for sure. <laughs> whether that's entropy gravity disillusionment futility right that shit weighs on you so mm -hmm. i yeah. i do think you have to do the maintenance mentally and spiritually but anyway it's just a premise i have may or not be may not be true but if you're not creating you tend to be what's the opposite you tend to destroy and that yeah. can be self-destruction i know that's what art therapy programs are largely about yeah, Have you uh, encountered that in your studies, th this idea? Yeah, no, our art therapy studies definitely do, um, obviously, which is more of like painting, drawing, that kind of stuff. That's one reason why I focused in on narrative therapy mm -hmm. um, for the same reason where it's readjusting your narrative, which is what I feel like you do with your music, Buffy. It's 
it's rewriting it, the narrative to to your life story in a positive light versus you know um focusing completely on the negative to where it brings you down i think that's a big part of your music is it's rewriting that narrative to increase the endorphins and the oxytocin to a positive you know narrative can i ask a question up. virginia mm -hmm. yeah uh sometimes it just is full of rage right it's just getting out the angst it seems oh, yeah. like it's full of angst so it may not be making lemonade of lemons per se but the act of doing it right and just expressing right. it has some value does it not yes yes i'd say um for sure i mean e even when it's you know music that sounds angry it's still it's rewriting the narrative because it's okay. We all get angry. We all get yep. depressed. We all get anxious, right? So I think it's important to express that, but it does. It does increase your endorphins because you are, it's, it's, it's literally a release of those it's a purging. hormones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a pur literal purging. Yeah. Do you agree with that, Buffy? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I write a lot of my new stuff on Bratz versus Barbie is, is, is a lot of, it's pretty, it's pretty gangster. <laughs> I, I love, love that. Right. I love that. <laughs> I've noticed a lot more transphobia on commercials. Uh, mm -hmm. Like every, it seems like every other commercial, it's a commercial targeting me. Um, and I, I feel I'm starting to feel like personally attacked sometimes. Mm -hmm. People are actually like gaslighting the shit out of me, like every fucking day. Mm -hmm. Excuse my language. I feel like it has nothing to do with my music at all whatsoever. It is just the dynamic of what's going on right now in the in the media. Mm. Well, that's what I want to make sure I follow. So you're actually seeing advertisements with, I'm guessing, negative tropes oh, yes. around the trans yeah, community. Yeah, I feel like my phone is directing it right at me. Like, right. But let's put that aside for a minute. I think in your form, you said, but you actually see the climate changing overall. There's just more aggression and more hatred yes. that oh, you're yeah. experiencing in your personal life. And you're attributing it to right? This political agenda that shows yeah. up in commercials. Give us an example. Cause I can't, th I mean, I would agree with you hundred percent. There's obviously <laughs> negative tropes of trans well, people I all over the media, but I don't know if I've seen a commercial that I can think of. I uh, it, are, are they political campaign commercials or what? I live in my van. So mm -hmm. I watch, uh, like YouTube a lot and mm -hmm. that my TV, I don't have like cable, mm -hmm. but I do watch YouTube, like, bob's burgers and all that on, on youtube mm -hmm. the commercials on those are literally mm. phobic wow i hadn't thought of so when you watch like bob's burgers streaming for example you're getting edgier ads than you would get on like network television or more political I, I, so i i don't know that they if that plays on network tv but wow. i do yeah. on, on on the tv on my tv my phone it's awful like they it's every other commercial that and well, now, there's like, algorithms <laughs> too, though. Like I, when you're streaming on YouTube, from what I know, are they targeted ads? Does it? I don't know. I, I, I can't tell. I don't, yeah, I don't well, know. About that. There's usually an algorithm that puts sponsored ads in your feed, but I don't know if that applies to, you know, commercials one would get when watching a streaming show. I but I, I believe you 100 When I see ads, I do press the setting to try and get them to not come, like to not show me that certain ad. Right. But mm -hmm. they always come back with more at like even worse off terrible ads about us. And and now they've got like ads of m my own community, like turning on their back on their own community. Wow. Wow, that's sad to say, so, especially since so many of the youth don't watch regular TV. They're on, mm -hmm. like, the phone. They're, on they're doing what I'm doing. They're watching TV on the phone. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Gosh, that's that's terrible to hear. Um, have in, in your new album, have you addressed that in your album or are you planning to yeah. with like a future album? Yeah. Yeah. No, I've, I'm, I'm doing it in this one. I wrote all new songs for this album. Um, I, I started when I came up with the idea for Bratz vs. Barbie, I started writing that day. What songs, um, address this specifically that are in your album? Just 
so we have a few songs that we succubus is one of them uh it's well it's called government succubus that one's i like that one a lot i got the names right here okay so hit it from the back i run away i think i did it again who you talking to now i think i did it again is probably my my new favorite that one is is uh it's kind of a tribute to britney spears mm -hmm. i use it because i love her i think i did it again is just basically about uh uh how you know how we should be worried about like homelessness and like violence against trans people in, in the gay community and mm -hmm. and yeah. uh but we you know how we should be worried about that stuff but Usually, like, on the main industry, they're worried about, like, cash, ass, money, mm -hmm. cars, sex, mm -hmm. drugs. I kind of just was like, and I, I do it again. I do it again. I like it. For the audience, I do it again. I do the, I pick the bad instead of the good. Right, right. Right, right. Uh, so, yeah. But it almost sounds, like, facetious. Like, oops, I did it again. Like, oops, I you dropped the it. soap in prison. Oops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got it. Yeah. Are you speaking specifically of the music industry or just society in general? I'm I'm pretty sure it's the music industry that's fucking everything up. I'm sure you've been following like the Usher allegations yeah. right? oh, yeah. against yeah. Yeah, and all that and poor Justin Bieber, all that shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a wait and see attitude a little bit, you know, because it does get sensationalized, I'll say that. Especially yeah. like you're saying in internet rabbit holes that aren't mainstream, conspiracy theories run amok. So yeah. I always have a wait and see attitude. You know, I've defended LA my entire adult life and said, well, where are you hanging out? Like if you've experienced the, there's plenty of fashion models, for example, that will say, well, yeah, I never did Coke during the eighties cause I chose not to. But then there are others who are social climbers or they do take advantage of the casting couch. I'm not saying it's all or nothing. There are plenty of very real, right. Stories of, uh, industry moguls absolutely assaulting right yeah. <laughs> act uh, actresses or starlets or whatever there's a long history of that in hollywood but within reason i tend to say yeah well what really and maybe i'm part of the problem and not the solution but what were you doing in a hot tub if it was a business relationship what were you doing at that party in the hot tub in the first place especially <laughs> so when i look at the videos that they're using to claim that p diddy groomed Justin Bieber, I watch it and I'm like, yeah, he's teaching me how to be a cool dude in the music industry. Yeah. Now you tell me he pinned him down and put his <laughs> up his ass. Okay, he got raped. Yeah. But within reason, I do have a wait and see attitude because the inflammatory language and the rhetoric they use is is really just meant to be sensational. So not yeah. once so far has Bieber said, Yep, he raped me. Yeah, there's not one time Bieber has come out and said nothing. He's, right. He's so, dead. so in the music industry, and I'm, granted, I'm not in it. I have friends that are in it, but I've never been in it. But I would say you choose to go to those parties at P Diddy's house that start in three at three in the morning, okay. right? You want to hear, hear of a conspiracy, Dominic? Go. <laughs> go. Okay. So I've got a conspiracy for you. This, there's this one for uh, I just found out about for Britney Spears. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you remember back in 2007 that Give Me More performance from the VMAs where she, like, you know, met, she didn't do so good. Ooh, yes. The, 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 the one her, that was like, yeah, so it was supposed to be her comeback. Back. Sorry, the one that was, I, I, the one with the snake keep, keeps coming no, in mind. But I remember it was a comeback, but she, her, she was really stilted and stiff and, yes. right, she didn't dance very well. Yeah. That one. Okay, I love mm -hmm. that performance, by the way. That's one of my favorites, but I found out why. That happened. P. Diddy. Tell me more. Okay, so I was I I look up Britney Spears pretty much every single day. I love Britney Spears. I love everything about her. <laughs> My favorite in the whole world. That. And I love and, that you love her. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I uh, I saw this. I watched this BJ investigates girl, and she's the one that said it. And uh, I I disagree with her. She said that she she looked back on all these court documents and all these uh. uh like a side deals from people that that, that they put down mm -hmm. that p diddy was in her entourage the night that that it went south p diddy there's pictures of her and diddy together that mm -hmm. night before her show wow drinking. wow and they say that the night before her show she was taken out of the club because she passed out mm -hmm. and they say it was not from drinking 
So that was a really freaky one. That would certainly explain the performance. Yep. Yes, yeah. that would. Ex- yeah, but I, 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 my point is, my point is, eventually. That out. Oh, Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so eventually it caught up with them. Yeah. Eventually, enough people came forward where nobody could dispute the fact that Harvey Weinstein, for decades, right, had not just used innuendo, like, right, a lot of times they use innuendo to say sexual harassment, assault, rape. Those are very different terms, right? So eventually the truth came out about Harvey Weinstein. With P. Diddy, it's not, I'm not exonerating, I'm not excusing any of his behavior, including teaching Justin Bieber at, what, 14, how to be a cool dude? Yeah. Uh, but time, you know, time will tell. I think if it's true enough, people will come forward, right? And then uh, he'll, yeah. the uh, accusations will be vindicated. I mean, obviously, you're trying to get out your angst about what's going on and stuff. But do you see that as like a positive way to like dr- to yeah, uh, fight that? Yes. Yeah. 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 That's that's my only way of fighting it. I have no other way mm. of fighting. All up on my body like Kenny me Gherkin Telling me your secrets get you high like church And pay me your way, you can have it all, keep burkin All up on my body like the sun, you burkin You can feel the heat in between the smash Boy, press the gas, go hard until we crash and Fuck him on the plane What I was hinting at regarding conspiracy theories and internet rabbit holes It's very well known that that is where propaganda is unregulated and it's rampant so I'm talking specific. When I said I defend Hollywood, I've heard it my entire life. I'm a native. So I'll say, if you tell me about Pizzagate or that they're all pedophiles or they're all friends with Jeffrey Epstein, I'm going to say those circles exist. And if you choose to rub elbows with these people, those that's the LA you'll experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is my home. So, you know, I, 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 if people go, oh, it's so plasticky, it's all silicone and it's all boobs and lips. I'm like, well, where do you hang out? Cause I don't see it. You know, <laughs> you're right. If you're hanging out on Canyon drive or Beverly Boulevard in Beverly Hill, I could forget the name of the street, but if, if you're shopping in Beverly Hills, that's what you're going to see. So I'm sorry, Pizzagate, you lose me, uh, child. Yes, there's a lot of trafficking in this world, but it ain't Hollywood, and it's not Hillary. You know, Hillary, I remember when she had an alien baby in the early 90s. <laughs> it's wow. any anyone that doesn't realize, right, these stories are fabricated as propaganda by the other side or the, the, the other candidate is living in an alternate reality. I'm what not you- kidding. The minute you had Hillary as... Uh, uh, first lady had opinions. Uh oh, can't have that. Ooh, she wanted to be involved in education and make a difference. Can't have that. So the fact that back then you said feminist, right? A women's liber, a feminist. Well, then clearly she had an alien baby, and that's when it began, and it continues to this day. It's all political mud slinging. Pizzagate. Come on, people, grow up, or just stop smoking pot, and you won't subscribe to all these paranoid conspiracy theories. All right, I've said my piece, Virginia. <laughs> well, I was, no, no, and I, I, I totally agree. It's like we always say: it's, it's, it's your if you're in your bubble, right, and, and it, it'll stick. It'll, it'll stick exactly. And so I think that's that's why I think it's important, like why we do the show and why we have like you know and like the music that you put out there, Buffy. It, it helps, I think, build that a, a more of a global perception versus our individual perceptions of just being in our little bubbles and day to day, and we forget like. There's so many other things out there. I just want people to have more to choose from. Exactly.
Yeah. Sometimes yes. I'm like, should I should I meditate? Should I chant? Nope. <laughs> I should just lie on the floor with my dog and get that <laughs> oxytocin flowing. <laughs> I love dogs. I love Pepsi. Yes. I think, you know, it's important to, for us sometimes to take that step and think, Hey, is it just because I'm staying, you know, am I staying in a certain lane that I'm not exploring mm -hmm. the other ones occasionally to make sure. And like you said, am I projecting on it? Is my mm -hmm. worldview based on my emotional imprint, based on my bad experiences, coloring the lens through which I'm reading this news story and right, or am I gravitating to? I do think algorithms are a problem, right? Virginia, you can speak to oh. all the studies about that. Mm -hmm. How, but normally it is keeping you in a bubble because it's keeping you surrounded by like minded talking heads, right? Media moguls, people that confirm your worldview. I mean, I have violent encounters almost on a daily basis now. Hmm. Wow. Is it just people on the street just coming yeah, up it's to people, you? It's people that walk by daily, people that, like, I guess. They go to work or they go to school or they go wherever they're going. And when they walk past, they are starting to get violent. I mean, it's I, I've probably been in a fight now since our last show mm -hmm. three or four times. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> sorry about that. Pepsi. <laughs> I'm sorry Pepsi is. It's, got, so, it's gotten so bad. People have sprinkled glass out in front of my doorway so when we wake up in the morning we'll walk out my dog's feet will like walk on top of it like they're that spiteful they're that evil that's what i'm talking about wow. right uh, we're here to talk about social issues and social reform and that includes hatred targeted at the trans community i too see that the climate shifts and the images we're exposed to in the media have a direct impact like i said i have a whole chapter on how Climates are created collectively from all these stories that people are putting out for their own reasons, whether it's political campaigning or to sell a product. It is true, a general climate or a status quo, it's called, is created. It was fine to make fun of fat people for a long time. Now it's not, right? <laughs> uh, so we do make progress in some areas and then we regress in others. I will agree with you that when I walk out the door these days, post-pandemic, I immediately either sense that the universe is in sync. All the molecules are conspiring, right? Everything's conspiring. Or I walk out and I'm like, is fucking Mercury in retrograde or what? Because, right, somebody will, <laughs> somebody will mow you down on the sidewalk the second you walk out the door. So call me crazy, but I do see either you just want to go back inside and wait it out, <laughs> right? And the Kabbalion, Virginia, would call that riding out the pendulum swings. I can tell them, you know, what the day is going to be like or what the climate is like right now based on, I don't know, who's bombing who in the news. And yeah. it's everything from the two homeless guys that are regulars, whom Ava knows, by the way, at Starbucks. You can just see, ooh, everybody's on edge. Everybody's on edge. So I just go lay low for a while yeah. <laughs> and just say tomorrow is another day. There's yeah, a vibe out there. I just you keep making new songs. I love it. Exactly. Right, yeah. Virginia? That's the oh, way. Yeah. That's, That's exactly the way. the way to do it. Climates change and it's week to week these days, mm -hmm. right? There can be hostility out there and then it can feel like, oh, that's the humanity I recognize. That's, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, people saying hello and goodbye and holding the door open at Starbucks. I recognize that. It is a yeah. funky, funky time energetically. I think Virginia was hinting at the law of attraction. When we find ourselves in a bubble, whether it's through algorithms or by conscious choice to surround ourselves with like-minded people, right? right, that have had the same emotional imprint in the same worldview, then we're not really attracting more of the same thing, but it's kind of all we see because we are in a bubble. The law of attraction is alive and well. What you put your attention on grows. That can be a plus or a minus. And if you tune out, I wish you could change your algorithms because if you could tune out the violence that you're seeing and just change the channel, right? Change the frequency yeah. and tune into something else. You're saying music allows you to do that, right? To tune yeah. out the noise and focus on the solution and not the problem. Well, it, it, I, I notice when I'm making music in the process of it, if I hear somebody say something or someone making fun of me out the door, I don't feel the necessary. I don't feel the necessary need to like address it. I could let it go. There you go, right? But if I'm not making music, I feel like I have to address it all the time. So, I mean, there's a reason I make gangster music.
you know? Mm-hmm. I I mean, I do, I do really tell, like, I, I really am a bad bitch. I fight like a girl, and I'm pretty, but I still win. <laughs> I, mean, that's I it. love it, I love it. <laughs> I mean, there's times, like, I get in my car, and I'm driving to work, and it's like, people, I, I'm looking, I'm going, are you, is there a target on my car? Like, are you trying to <laughs> hit me as I'm driving down the road? Right. You know, because you just feel like, like, every, like, every time, like, every, like, unprotected left turn or like when there's like emerging lane you're just like why is my car the one that everybody's trying to like you know <laughs> right. smash into today right well but there is a sign on your back yeah. when you're a live wire mm-hmm. and an antenna and you can't do what both of you had referred to which is uh let it let it go right yeah. put your attention on something else if you can't then you do have a sign on your back saying give yeah. me more of the same that's what the law of attraction is what yeah. i was hinting at is my in that particular story the universe was trying to get me to find my responsibility in all of it. Sure, I framed it in, well, I've always wanted more spiritual humility, right? Take everything away and I'm going to be more grateful. I got what I asked for because <laughs> <laughs> I literally lost everything but my life. Yeah. So even yeah. though I framed it in the most positive way, I had to go, how am I contributing to this? I don't like the idea of, oh, I'm being punished for my choices. It's never punishment. But it is cause and effect. So it doesn't really matter in this conversation. For me, of course, it turned out to be self-love. Everything is self-love. At the bottom of it all, nobody took anything from me. I deprived myself because deep down I didn't, but this is universal. I didn't believe I was lovable. So you deprive yourself when you don't believe you're worthy and you don't believe you're lovable. So I had to learn over the pandemic to actually love myself. Well, that was my story, and uh, taking responsibility was it. And uh, yes, I think always you have to be creating, and that does take your attention off the grievance, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, even if it's unrelated, you may be working on just a song, but at least your attention is not on the grievance or on that. I'm working on I'm working on music videos now too, and I'm getting I, I I'm I'm excited to start. Awesome. Well, that's the, the trick, isn't it? Just always yeah. have a project. Stay distracted. <laughs> well, yeah. So, well, and something to work toward, I think, is always mm-hmm. really important. You Purpose. know? Yeah. Purpose. Yeah. I know, I know for me, um, like talking about the car thing, a lot of times when I'm when I feel that way, it's it's usually because I'm in my rush and I'm not listening or paying attention to to those around me. And so when I stop and I actually like hold the door open for somebody or not get that aggression of like but i need to get to where i need to get and like they just need to get out of my way when i take that step back and put others before me mm. I, I i feel that that target comes off of me so that that's like that's where i always focus is like i start to focus on others but that's absolutely feels, yeah get better mm-hmm. yeah but that they say you know if ever if it's true everyone's looking for what inner peace contentment tranquility i would say safety for you buffy when was the last time you felt safe that's my story just really never feel safe so that's called a low level chronic anxiety or ptsd right but a lot of us are just looking to to breathe just feel safe but i would say most people seem to be seeking for happiness or bliss and other people yeah i'd be fine with contentment right and moments of bliss but you could put it all under the umbrella of well-being inner peace tranquility contentment satisfaction right and some people would say "Mm, most religions and most spiritual traditions seek to limit the suffering in life those are universals right but i'm agreeing with you virginia the trick always is putting your attention on really anything but yourself Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i call it purposeful contribution whether it's to a dog named Pepsi or to your grassroots, right, circle of friends and family, as long as you're giving back, that tends to be the key to contentment. When when do you feel like you're in your best place when when you are facing this? Is it when you're writing? Is it when you're actually doing the singing? The actual mm. the, the actual process of making it, yeah. Okay. I've I started out singing at three at three years old. Um, but I didn't start talent shows until I was like, like nine or 10. And, uh, but I, I sang in everyone and I won everyone. Yeah. When was the last time you performed live? Oh man, probably like, 
probably then. <laughs> really? Yeah, because yeah. I know, like, I, literally. I in my room every day, but. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, it's a separate set of rewards because I, I agree just singing. That's my church, you know, even if it's in my bedroom, it's like feeling, you know, chanting is a tradition for a reason. It resonates in your literally sinuses and your different chambers and that correlate with, I think, different chakras. Maybe you're connecting with people by performing as well. So when yeah. you're performing live, you feel that complete circuit yeah. of reaching people, my, touching that- people. Yeah. That's my like ultimate like fantasy goal, like is to be live. Well, maybe yeah. the recorded music will get you there. You know what I mean? People will continue to discover your music and then you will end up performing live locally. I think it's a separate reward from <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, if it helps, you really actually got a lot of hits on our YouTube channel. And um, just so you know, this with this episode, we're going to put your new music along with it. But also, we've kind of received a little spike in our YouTube visibility. And uh, I think that's going to continue moving forward, isn't it, Virginia? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. It's definitely continue moving forward. I was just curious, because uh, I haven't, obviously, I've been, I know I went down there and visited, but I haven't lived in the LA area in a long time. Are Do they not have, like, little places for more of like the indie um, indie musicians to go and perform, right? I mean, has that dynamic kind of changed since COVID? I, I'm sorry. I'm a like an open to... mic night or yeah. just a small venue. Yeah. Well, small venue or open mic. Do they not do those anymore down there? Cause I, I mean, I know that used to be a big thing, at least in my twenties and thirties before I moved. Mm-hmm. There's, I, I know of an open mic down, down in Echo Park. But that's the only one. And I don't go out there no more. Is that music or poetry yeah, or all the above? Yeah, it, was a, it was a little diner that like had an open mic night. Yeah, the open mics I've seen like at the Lyric Hyperion are show tunes with a pianist. Like mm-hmm. that's the most you can hope for. Either backup, you bring your own backup track or there's a pianist. But it tends to be, yeah, like a piano bar. But I would say um, there are definitely small music. Like it used to be Pig and Whistle, Cat and Fiddle, those type places in Hollywood proper that um you know one stood a pretty good chance of getting a gig so and then silver lake really is a hub for music again i'm not in the scene but i have a few friends that work for record labels the garage used to be kind of a hot spot and yeah there's there's definitely clubs in silver lake i'm just an old fart and i don't frequent them i tried to be a stripper but it didn't work out (laughs) (laughs) that should be the title of your mom your memoir I tried to audition for a couple, but they never, first off, they never called me back. Once I told them I was trans, it was over. They were like, I don't want to. So I didn't. Was it for an event or they just wanted a stripper around the house? I knew that I could make money that way. And that's, I mean, I, I, you can make bank being a stripper. So I was like, all right, I'll really try. But uh, I couldn't get a, I couldn't get a call back from anybody. It seems like the right venue would grab you up, but <laughs> talk yeah, to I'm, Ava's son. <laughs> I'm like kind of surprised. I'm like, really? Because I'm thinking. I know I have boobs. I have boobs and everything. <laughs> well, I'm like, you're beautiful, but I'm also thinking like, you know, there's, especially now. I mean, I, I'm probably the I, wrong uh, person. Uh, I fl- I float both doors, so I'm probably the wrong person to. Be okay, I can to, hook but... you up because <laughs> Virginia. Do you remember my saying? And I don't. I won't say any names, mm-hmm. but I have a very dear friend who's an actor who's was in one of my films. I've said too much already. Anyway, he's had a head injury. He did a boxing film, and he had a head injury. So, the beauty is he has no inhibitions, and he mm-hmm. just speaks his mind. <laughs> But he he's straight, 100% straight, and he tried to get me to go to a tranny bar. And uh, he is obsessed. They have tranny bars? Well, at the time they did. Oh. Well, and those are my words. <laughs> <laughs> the I don't want to say the wrong thing, but he used the, <laughs> no, chicks with, the chicks with blank, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's totally into that. And I'm like, dude, you've got the wrong homo. Like, sorry, I, I don't, <laughs> it's not my scene, but he was so motivated. So I'll call him up and we'll hook you up. But, that's, but that, was, that was kind of my thing. I'm like, there's, there's usually hangouts for every, <laughs> you know, passion out there. And that's why I'm like, really? There's nothing out there? I Let's find- just say every fetish, every proclivity, yeah. every penchant. Yeah. Yep. 
I, I see a job model or a, a business model, not job model, a business model right there for anybody who, who's looking for a new entrepreneurial um, thing. I think we need to have to have bars that or strip clubs that cater to all. I am I'm with you on that. <laughs> You'll be Thank the you. brains behind the operation. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, you saw it here. <laughs> Flash forward. Yes. Five years. You have your new album dropping. Um, are you working on it on another one already or are you yeah, focusing I, on I'm just always, keeping... I'm always working on one, yeah. <laughs> You're always working on one. Because yeah. it keeps you focused, right? And keeps you yeah. moving forward. I, I want to just have a big body of work, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would like to when I do and when when I do get a chance to, to I do foresee that in my future. I really and that's my that is my goal. I will achieve it. Uh, what performing live in other words or at least a couple hundred songs to be able to perform for people nice yeah no and i think that's great and i love the fact that you've got that determination and the motivation with it because i mean that's that's what it, and we actually just had um i guess i talked about that you know that you have to have the conviction and the passion and i cannot remember the five c's it's the oh yes it's courage <laughs> conviction courage confidence what else do you remember, Dominic? <laughs> oh, we're talking about, yeah, she was also a musician. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Glenda. Glenda, yeah. Yeah. Benavides with an yes. S and not a Z. Yeah. Benavides. Yeah, I loved what she said about that. I don't remember the next C, but yeah, I, don't either. <laughs> I like how she laid it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brad's versus Barbie's dropping today. Oh, wow. Woohoo. <laughs> Woo um, but the one, after I'm not even thinking about when I'm dropping it, it I got to make a lot more music. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of not worrying about outcome, right? Mm -hmm. Just honoring the inspiration and just chipping away at it and finding that bliss. I, I, have, like you... I have the certain days in the week where I can write a lot and and, and and do and make a lot of music, but then I have these random days, like the day before yesterday, I had like a three day span of where it was just blank. And I couldn't get nothing, nothing. It was well, maybe dry. that those are the days you need to promote. There are a lot of models for the creative process, and none of them address what happens when you're done. So whether you're a painter, a sculptor, or a singer-songwriter, at the end of it all, does it collect dust under the bed? Do you share it with a select few and changed a loved one? Or does it find its public, its readership, right? Does it make you a star? Nobody addresses what happens when you're done. So people that do then, right, find their audience or get their work out there somehow, they will say, oh, my God, it takes a lot of sustained passion. you got to keep loving your babies, <laughs> right? And so that is a trick. It's a trick not everybody has. So I say when you're not feeling motivated to create music, then do the menial stuff like promoting it, getting it out there, uploading to YouTube, getting the metadata in there. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's smart. Why not? If it's a goal. Way to think about it. Yeah. Because I think we do have cycles, right? We're not always going to be brimming yeah. with inspiration. It's like the writer who sits there and stares at the blank page, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> you have right. to you have to look at okay, well, if I can't do this right now, what other things can I do that still is productive toward that ultimate goal? Yeah. And it doesn't mean you've lost anything, right? You haven't lost inspiration or your connection to the creative process. It just means you're in that part of the cycle. Yeah. <laughs> must be the it must be the way the moon set or something. <laughs> it must be what? I don't know the way the moon set. I don't know what I said. Well, yeah, who know? We don't know. We don't know, but there are cycles in everything, right? In nature, in the universe, everything is on a schedule and a cycle. I believe in aliens. You believe I in love aliens? That. I believe in aliens, yeah. Have There's you heard about the go back to going back to conspiracy theories? Yeah. Have you heard about the Ill Israeli commander who's come out and Have you heard anything about an Israeli military commander that's retired now? Uh-uh. Well, Google it. I'm going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely, you know, everything you've heard, I've heard my entire life, which is, of course, we've been in touch with them. There's many downed spacecraft. We have free energy as a result. It's just we've never been able to wean ourselves off, right, petroleum onto free energy. All those conspiracy oh. theories. There have been a lot of theories over the years that we're already in touch with aliens, but the military, the government is keeping it a secret, right? And yeah. this military commander basically confirmed as much.
I, oh yeah, that yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, <laughs> of course. Do you think they built the pyramids? Yeah, I think there was obviously. A, Come on, I think I mean I think there was a civilization before our civilization that was probably way further than us. Oh, I think it was Mars, and we just destroyed the atmosphere, so we came here. I had a dream about Mars that I lived on Mars. Um, I don't want to get into it. I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do think we're going to learn more, and it, it yeah. wouldn't surprise me if it was Mars, and it wouldn't be su surprise me if they already knew, but we weren't being told. But I'll just it, say that we were a lot heavier on Mars and a lot bigger. Mm, mm, the giants of the Bible. Maybe that's, that's what's happening. That's the I'm, giants in the Bible. I'm, I'm like, maybe I'm going back to my old roots as I put on weight. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> wow, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's those old genes coming out. <laughs> yes, the old genes. Literally, the old genes coming out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, have you have you written any since since bring it up, aliens? Have you thought about doing any albums or songs that kind of tie into the whole alien? phenomenon or no sorry about it i thought i i haven't done it yet though i love it because you know really good science fiction doesn't even just caricature the present it predicts the future you know mm -hmm. so i think we will discover more and more about what's being kept for now i'm <laughs> sounding like i have a foil hat in the closet <laughs> i'm not a conspiracy theorist but i love that the human brain is wired to connect dots so right i'll sign up for anything mm -hmm. As long as, you know, there's no cult leader encouraging me to cut ties with my family, I'll, I'll, I'll indulge your cult for a day. <laughs> like anything <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> there's one called The Way, and it literally combines Celtic, right? The reason the medical insignia, right, with the double helix, the mm -hmm. intertwined double helix, the reason it resembles the Celtic symbol is because aliens came down and, you know, everyone that's been abducted and probed sees that on their the lapel of the aliens and it's like oh my god it makes perfect sense everything connects so like a great religion or cult actually just connects dots for people and it resonates because that's how we're wired i had a feeling that you would like to talk about aliens of course I, nothing would surprise me i don't spend any time on it i don't really care i love ghosts too but they're not interested in me so do you know what i mean like i'm yeah. all about aliens but just call me, it, yeah. call me when there's evidence and then. Right. You, I, right. right. I want to meet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's a great documentary on Netflix right now about <laughs> the latest, greatest telescope that actually sees the origins of the universe because light takes that long to travel. So I when know. it, I know what you're about, yeah. uh, it's fascinating. I can't believe that that's not on the news every yeah. day. Those stunning photographs that just put you in a complete state of awe. That should be on the news every day. When you look at the vastness of the cosmos. Aren't you terrified? Why would you think? Well, why would you think like life exists solely on this little blue marble? Yeah. Of course, there are many planets with life. Or, yeah. or, or that we're the only intelligence as we. <laughs> like it's almost say. selfish to think that. Right. Exactly. I agree. Exactly. I agree. Maybe they don't want to talk to us just because we can't learn to get along with each other yet on our own yeah. planet. <laughs> We're like Jerry Springer to the aliens, right? They're, <laughs> they're just waiting for us to get our shit together. You're probably not too wrong from that. All right, I'm not kidding. Yeah, right. Why yeah. step into that hot mess, right? <laughs> yeah. They're like, yeah. <laughs> or we're all just genetic stock, and this is one big experiment. And when they're ready to harvest, like you're saying, after we learn the lessons you're talking about, once we're good genetic stock, then they'll harvest. So that's something to look forward to. <laughs> that's an interesting thought, but okay. <laughs> it's all over the place. Did you not see the matrix? Uh, yes, yes. But I don't want to be harvested. <laughs> well, yeah, Okay, so we should not evolve. Is that what you're saying? No, evolve. I just don't want to be harvested. Okay, <laughs> that's my, that's my selfish ego coming out. That's my my dark shadow. Okay, uh, <laughs> where have we gone? Where yeah. have we gone? <laughs> We're getting punchy. I think. I think so. Yeah, like I'm in a cult. Did you hear what I heard, Virginia? Yes, yes. Yeah, she feels like she's in a cult with oh, us. Oh, she feels oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, don't you make will me be our... safe. You're safe with us. <laughs> our cult leader, Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear lord. Well, I have always wanted to write a religion. I, I, I'm. It's not out of the realm of possibilities. So, is there anything else, Buffy, that you'd like to share with us? I know 
you're passionate about making sure that there's awareness about what's going on. I just don't know if there's anything that we've missed as we've gone on a bunch of tangents. <laughs> um, well, I feel like music has definitely kept me okay. Hmm. But without it, it's it, I, I could be dangerous. You know, it's, it's one of those things you just don't want to slap a label because nobody wants a label slapped onto them. I mean, nobody right. wants that. Well, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, too. Ex exactly. <clears throat> Did you happen to see the Serafina movie pr pr two two to three years ago now? Mm-hmm. I did see I'm that. not Serafina. What's her name? Aquafina. Uh, yeah, Aquafina, 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 yes. That movie is about the tradition of not telling your loved ones, especially elderly loved ones, that they've been diagnosed with cancer. They withhold the information, the diagnosis from them because they know full well it will only advance. Bruce Lipton's The Biology of Belief goes into this mm -hmm. in great depth, how it is the placebo effect is alive and well. It is a so, so there's a really great example in that book of like, uh, so and so, I forget his name, but it's a case history that's well studied. And it, in the end, it says he died with cancer, but not of cancer. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So he died because he believed he had four months to live, period. There's this Good. phenomenon where doctors have beginner's luck, right? <laughs> they cure things right and left with, you know, the Midas touch. But over time, their success rate dips mm -hmm. and it's across the board. Most of them, if they analyze it, will say, it's because I didn't know any better in the beginning and I didn't know the statistics. I, I didn't know how many mm -hmm. patients I would ultimately lose. Mm -hmm. So that says it all to me. Yeah, no, and that's true. And, and there's definitely a difference between Western and Eastern approaches to um, mental health and and cultural dynamics that play in. Um, I know it's a lot that come from more of that collectivism, um, cultural um, mentality versus the individualistic like we have out mm -hmm. here in the US. Like being, <laughs> be, having community and recognizing mm -hmm. our interconnectedness. And right, exactly. And, and, and going back to like, you know, um, Aquafina, the whole concept of not telling the, there are cultures um, that is part of their culture that the family knows, but they don't tell the loved one for those reasons, because mm. having hope is, is a powerful oh, thing yep. of, of, and so you, you kind of rob people of that if, because mm -hmm. they, it, yeah. like you said, it does become a self-fulfilling prophecy, um, where people, you know, like, like ADHD is like a big one. A lot of, I hear a lot of people like, oh yeah, I've been diagnosed with ADHD. And then all of a sudden it, it kind of becomes like this crutch. Mm. Yeah, for some people yep. to excuse <clears throat> behaviors. Hope is eroded when you're given a label. Exactly. Right. Wow. Yeah. So well, I'm going to take, can I jump in? I want to yeah. direct it back to Buffy. Yeah. I think this is interesting and I hope you're taking some of this in Buffy, but I do wonder as an artist, for me, when I am excited about a project and it is my reason for getting up in the morning, right? It's because I am restoring my hope in humanity. I'm restoring through my writing or through whatever the filmmaking, whatever it is. I'm actually restoring my faith in the world, humanity, yeah. hum, human condition. Yeah. Instead of throwing in the towel and giving up on those motherfuckers, right? <laughs> I'm actually through my writing going, you that's know what? Pe people aren't so bad. So yeah, that's, that's my true. definition of hope. So I'm asking you, what does hope look like to you? I know we all have bad days and we have good days. So when you're hopeful about life or humanity and when you're motivated, what, what does that look like? What does hope mean to you? Music. Wow. Well, okay. Making music. Do you feel more alive? Is that a good way of putting it? I feel like it's like what exactly what you just said. It's restoring my faith in humanity. I love it. Yeah. Because I'm not getting no sleep. None. When you're when you're working on a project? Or... None. Yeah. None. None. I can't. It's It's impossible. <laughs> You know, we can all say to some degree we have tendencies, and that's why I'm using the word tendencies, because, I mean, we all can have a tendency of being certain mental health diagnoses, meaning, um, you know, obsessive compulsive, you know, yeah. narcissistic. Um, to different degrees, right? Yeah, to, to different degrees. So there's there's definitely your clinical and chronic, which are where you should get the professional help. And then mm. there's, you know, just like we all get depressed. Everybody mm -hmm. gets anxiety. Mm -hmm. Like that is normal. Mm -hmm. But then there's where you go to the atypical degrees. <laughs> and that's yeah, I mean, Marianne Williamson very much would, she always prefaces it by saying, 
well, these are my words. I'm not Tom Cruise. I'm not anti-pharmaceuticals. Those are my words. Mm -hmm. But she does say, look, I'm not in the mental health profession, but I do know a lot about spirituality. And I agree with her. She's like, yeah, we used to just call it melancholy. Now it's right. Varying degrees of depression to the point of clinical, but she'll say, you know, that's how we grow. And I think that's what we're saying here is the crucibles, the crises slash opportunities, the cognitive dissonance that we do through storytelling, by the way, are the ways in which we grow. So if in Western society, we like to say good, bad, back to creating labels, right? And making you feel like you're, you're a victim of those labels, good, bad, right, wrong. Well, what if it just is? What if you never arrive and life is going to always present challenges to you and you don't throw those value judgments on them and you just say, you know what, it's okay to feel melancholy for two days. That's what my body needs to do right now. But I think we want to just make all the bad stuff go away and put a Band-Aid on things and medicate them societally. Would you agree with that, Virginia? We're supposed to sit with the word compassion. That's come up on mm -hmm. this podcast before. Yeah. Compassion apparently means sitting with the pain. Yeah. The passion is the pain. You don't fix it. You don't give advice. You just sit with the pain in non-judgment. Right. So, yeah. and, no, and I totally agree. And I can't remember who it was. No, it was a kid. It was a kid talking to their spiritual leader in the clip. And it was like, um, you know, they, they were asking, how do I get past being angry? And I can't remember specifically what was said, but it was basically like, well, anger is not something you get. You want to get out of your body and get rid of. It's a part of who you are. You just need to learn how to direct your anger in a different way mm -hmm. that isn't hurtful right. to yourself or someone else, but is directed because anger is important. Like why, if you're feeling angry, there's a reason why you feel angry. There's a reason why you feel melancholy. There's a reason mm -hmm. why you feel mm -hmm. sad. Those aren't bad emotions. And I think and you don't get to the bottom of that reason mm -hmm. if you just medicate or put a bandaid on it, right? Or suppress it. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think, you know, unfortunately in our culture, um, and, and I get it, you know, our country, I mean, it's in our national anthem, you know, it's the home of the free and the brave. And so we right. hear that and you hear that word bravery. And I think it kind of makes us want to go, well, sadness, bad. Right. Of course. Well, there's you a know? million reasons. We're, yeah. we're the overcomers. We're mm -hmm. the westward movement. We're manifest yeah. destiny. We're exactly. Yeah. And, and I think, unfortunately, that has caused a lot of, not all, but a good portion of the ills that we see um, mm -hmm. and systemic problems that we have. And, and yeah, yeah. I, I think you're right. I think we, it's okay. Sit, sit in your sadness, sit mm -hmm. in your anger, sit, sit well, in Tom, your- Thomas More, we've talked about him. I'm just going to- mm -hmm. Go ahead touch on a couple things you said. So we've talked about Thomas More a lot, how just across the board, and yes, it's Judeo-Christian, Western European society, mostly, mm -hmm. we don't recognize the value of the yin and the yang and the light and the shadow, right? Mm -hmm. But we will uh, be more likely to uh, not embrace the shadow. So Jungian psychology is largely right about our shadow self as well, mm -hmm. but we'd rather reject it, right? That's why we have right. Day of the Dead in Mexico, but definitely not here, right? Yes, exactly. So we shove it all under the carpet. But I was just going to say too, if we don't bring our demons out into the light, we can't really defeat them, right? If we don't look them in the face. Oh, and anger. I read an entire book on anger and yes, everybody has it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. right whether it's passive aggressive anger there's a whole chapter on rumination we all have our different style of expressing anger but nobody is exempt yeah. so i would agree with you virginia overt anger is not productive to relationships right whether it's yeah. a workplace relationship or an intimate relationship or a parental of course overt anger is not productive but we demonize it a little too much right, right. because i think you, that whoever it was, uh, whether it's uh, Thich Nhat Hanh or uh, the Dalai Lama, whomever said, oh, no, 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 you don't, you don't get rid of it. He's saying that actually righteous anger has a place. We wouldn't have social reform without righteous anger, right? We're never going to solve this problem of violence toward the trans community without militant activists that are fucking over that shit. You know, right. so, but I think that's what you're hinting at, right, Virginia? You, just, you use it for good, not exactly. And it, and it goes right back to like, you know, the music that Buffy's making. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the point, you know, you're using it in that 
you know, you, you get angry about the things that happen, but you're turning those into lyrics and into musics and you're singing about it and you're releasing it and you're releasing it in a positive way out into the world, even though it comes from a place of sometimes hurt and mm -hmm. resentment and anger. Yeah. And that's okay. And it's every true. time after I feel better. Uh, well, but right as a, by extension too, somebody out there goes, whoa, I felt just like that. And I'm not alone, right? So the patron mm -hmm. actually experiences their catharsis by you opening your veins, right? And being vulnerable enough to share that with us. Uh, but I, I think on the macro level too, you do need, we were talking about Malcolm X versus uh, Martin Luther King this morning. Amen to all of it, right? We need people that are expressing their anger, not just for the catharsis of the patron, but because that's only the only way to get shit done sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Protests, even though you probably shouldn't burn buildings or throw TVs through the window or loot, you know, what is the line between peaceful protest and demonstration and actual violence? Uh, I think the anger is, if it's uh, justifiable in, I don't know, the consensus or I guess if it's um, righteous anger, it has a place. Thank you. And thanks, Buffy. By the way, I'm going to majorly edit this episode. As you know, I'm going to put in your music videos where it makes sense. I think you liked the last one, right? The last episode? Thank you. You have a little delay. Was that just thank you? Oh, no, I said I loved it. It was cute. Okay, so hopefully it'll be like that. I think we have a lot to work with here. I do. But... I have a few uh, video shots if you want them. Uh, vi videos uh, of the songs? Yeah, like music videos, like a piece of music video I made and stuff. Absolutely, yeah. And we could put them in the supplemental content mm -hmm. on YouTube Don't embarrass as well. me. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> if it's embarrassing, don't post it. <laughs> well, you, only you know that. What do you mean? Uh, I I just I choose to to let you decide. You're the you're the. Well, it's yeah. not about being embarrassed. We of <laughs> course we'll look. I don't want to make any promises. We'll look at them if there's like, I don't know, um, something distasteful. I suppose we wouldn't post it, but I'm sure it'll be fine. You know, we won't embarrass us. Obviously, we're not easily embarrassed. But what I was trying to say, Buffy, is I know you were listening a lot and not necessarily speaking, but I do think some of these conversations will be valuable to the listeners. And then maybe later you'll listen back and hear something you didn't hear the first time. But uh, Virginia was very nicely giving you an opportunity. You know, now is your chance to share anything you want to impart to our listeners. And it was, you know, kind of a lot of psychobabble between Virginia and I. And I hope you're not bored. I apologize for that. No, I'm not bored. I, I just, I didn't, I didn't know where to interject. <laughs> well, we we could ask you. I mean, it, did any of that that we talked about make sense to you? Is there anything you want to I share? Keep up with. I mean, I I. I enjoy your guys' conversation very much. It it definitely lets lets me leave feeling happier. I'm well, so glad. Yeah, that that thank you. That's so touching to hear. Yeah, you're definitely not alone. And I know Virginia, you probably encounter a lot in your studies, right? And in your advocacy, victim advocacy, right? Yeah, I do. Um, and you know, that's like been one of the things that I've been focusing on as I've been working, you know, under licensed um professionals until i get my full license is um you know trying to figure out where my niche where i want to niche myself because there's a lot of people who are in the field that i'm in that tend to cater to the general public not that that's a bad thing i mean there are some that niche but i know for me niching more with um people who come from trauma and mm -hmm. are part of the lgbtq and you know um chronic illness that kind of stuff is definitely an area that i have found i'm i have the most passion and drive toward it and, mm -hmm. and and i find like when we have these conversations um that's something that we find with everybody and find our, you know find our kindred spirits because we realize there are things that we're all passionate about that speaks to us that i think is what gives us that conviction and the confidence we need to to move forward in, in our passions I think we're also, all three of us, <clears throat> champion the underdog, right? Mm -hmm. We're kind yeah. of getting a lot of uh, silenced voices or erased voices on the podcast. And I mm -hmm. think I had to look back and go, you know, I guess I always didn't really, I never cared what people thought. So I had just kind of a motley crew of friends that had really nothing in common other than they didn't march to the same drummer, if that makes sense. 
Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's coming into play too, Virginia. You're, you find your compassion for the down and out, right? The underdog, the underrepresented, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know if I call it the underdog. I think it's, you know, more of, and I hate even saying that more of the silent voice, but I think it's, it's more of the ones who just don't buy into the status quo, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like you free said. Free thinkers. Free yeah. thinkers. Yeah. Free thinkers, exactly. And I'm badass big- bitches. <laughs> yes. Big- oh, you are absolutely th- a free thinker, Buffy. I 100% agree with that, and I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been in conversations forgot what you were talking about? Yes. yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's happening to me more and more. How do you and Ava ever finish a conversation? I actually pull her out of it a lot. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you have the same affliction. It's overrated. The linear stuff is overrated. But any thanks for hanging in there and paying attention mm-hmm. as long as you have. In that case, yes, yes. <laughs> I appreciate your time, Dominic, and you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know that I like the way you talk. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Very yes, fun. Yes, very fun. Okay, guys, uh, we'll wrap up. All right, and to our listeners, remember: life is story. And we can get our hands in the clay. Individually and collectively, we can write our own story. See you next time. Okay, bye guys. Bye. I gotta walk Bowie. I'll see you. Tell Pepsi hello. Go cuddle Pepsi. I will. All right. If there's anything, (laughs) Buffy, you have my number. You can reach out. Okay. Molly wanna fuck up at a bitch, ho You can't make me sweat Every time I come around It's like you bounce, you got a jet, ho You don't really want smoke You just talking about your neck I ain't politicking with no wookie, bitch What I want, I get Big fat titties in the hanging on my tank top That's how Big fat ass, you know I'm gonna thank God Thank God Pussy Gucci Wally made him hit the bank probably Fuck him in the hotel lobby Stop, stop, but try me, bitch get froggy Lame mess, bitch, now she don't got it Big fat titties and they hanging on my tank top. Bow bow, bow bow. Big bad ass, he ain't no man. Thank God, thank God, praise Jesus, ho. Pussy Gucci Wally made him hit the bank, probably. Fuck him in the hotel lobby. Thought about try me, bitch get froggy. Lame ass bitch, now she don't bow, bow, bow. Ay, bitch, I'm running this shit. Ay, and equipped with a blick. Ay, pull it out like a dick. Pussy, you a hoe and you switch. You don't really want smoke. You man, Buffy breasts the shit. Ay, crash you a dummy, man, a bitch stunning. Come and get you something, bitch. Ay. Better get to drumming. Bow, bow. Shoot me your tummy, bitch. I'm vicious and hungry. Bow. Go get you some money. Move like six brick, you know a bitch cunning. Walk, walk you like a dog, cause I'm keeping shit sunny. Keep it shit sunny, bitch. Stop training and this motherfucker see me coming. Bet you see me coming, big bow. Big, buffy. big fat titties and they hanging on my tank top. Bow, 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 bow. Big fat ass, you know me, thank God. Wally made it hit the bank probably Fuck him in the hotel lobby Thought about trying me, bitch get froggy Lame ass bitch, now she don't got it Ay, Big fat titties and they hanging on my tank top Bow bow, bow bow, bow bow Big fat ass, you know I'm gonna thank God Thank God, thank God Pussy Gucci Wally made him hit the bank probably Fuck him in the hotel lobby Thought about trying me, bitch get froggy Lame ass bitch, now she don't got it Whoop a hoe ass in the back, get body Fuck with me, bitch get costly Bow Bitch, I look like a dolly. You as big as a motherfucking trolley. Wait, equivalent to a brass doll. You more like a pocket poly. Fuck your daddy, nonchalantly. I'm top notch pussy, you average oddly. Yeah.